Hey, I'm Katie and this past weekend was Record Store Day, or Vinyl Christmas as I like to think of it. As usual, I got up very ridiculously early and headed out to my local record store. I picked up quite a haul, so I thought I'd share them with you today and just show some of my music tastes, some of the kinds of things that I'm interested in at the moment. So if you don't know what Record Store Day is, basically every year record stores across the country and I believe across the world all put on like a special day and it's all about celebrating independent record stores, celebrating their role in communities and within the music industry and showing just how important they are within the music industry in general. So they have things like in-store live performances, they'll have competitions, they'll have all these like things that just celebrate the record store existing and one of the things that I think Record Store Day has become most popular and most famous for recently is the limited releases that they have. So these are special limited edition vinyl records and some cassettes, sometimes CDs as well, that are only available in person and it's first come first served. You can only buy the limited releases in person for the first week that they're out. So it's like you have to go out physically to the record store and find them for yourselves. So it's a bit of an adrenaline rush. There's like a whole thing of like, will I get it? Will I not? It's very exciting. I've made haul videos about my experience of the past four record store days, so I'll have a link to them in the description below. I've also made a record store day survival guide, which you may not have use for until next year, but there are some tips there for picking up record store day releases after record store day itself. So if there's anything that you're still looking for, I'd recommend checking that out. And again, the link will be probably up here and in the description. So as I said, I was really excited for this year's record store day. I got up at 3am and I went down to Resident Music. Even though I got there at like 4am, like 4.15, I was still number 48 in the queue. So that tells you like how many people go to Resident Music in Brighton. I think it's one of the most popular record stores in the area and people come from all over, sleep out overnight. There's some truly dedicated people who will stay there for like the whole day beforehand. It's such a cool atmosphere because it's like all these people who care so much about vinyl that they're willing to like give up a whole day of their lives just to focus on it. I had narrowed down my list of what I wanted to get and I had made like a long list and then I made my list of like the things I would absolutely love to get as part of like my first bunch and then I had some alternates just in case I couldn't get any of those but I was actually able to get everything on my list this year so it was really exciting. I really love the way that Resident runs Record Store Day because they do it with um, like a little booklet that you have and you tick off all the ones that you want. You go up to the counter and then they go down and get the releases for you. Before when I've gone to Rough Trade they do it slightly differently where they have all of the releases out on like tables and in crates so you get to do like a bit of like speed crate digging which on the one hand is fun and it makes it more like a treasure hunt but on the other I find it quite stressful because you don't know if you're missing out on the ones that you're looking for or like where they might be although everyone is always very like well behaved at it I personally find it a lot less stressful to do it the resident way where you just hand over your list at the counter and you know that if they've got it then you'll get it and if they haven't then you won't like I like the way that they do it it's very calm it's a lovely atmosphere at resident I cannot sing their praise is enough they are a great local record store so if you're ever in Brighton do check out Resident Music. Before I launch into the haul itself I just wanted to say that if you do enjoy this video and you're not already subscribed please do remember to click subscribe and turn on the notifications bell before you leave the video today it means that you'll get an alert whenever I post a new video or if I start live streaming. So Without further ado, let's get into the haul. I know that's what you came for. Just to make a note before we get into this beautiful vinyl, literally apart from one record, all of the records that I got are on colored vinyl and not just plain colored vinyl, but they're on beautiful designs. So I just wanted to say props to all of the vinyl designers, I guess, whoever it is that puts together the package of the album art and the actual pressing itself, because there are some truly like gorgeous pressings this year and I've got them just here so I will get into them. So the first record that I got is the Jeff Buckley In Transitions EP. I love Jeff Buckley. I am absolutely obsessed with his album Grace. You can just connect with him so easily through his music. All of the pain, all of the fascination, all of the beauty of his music and his voice is just so clear and easy to tap into when you listen to him. So this is 
the In Transitions EP and it was released specifically for Record Store Day with some recordings that have never previously been released. There's some early ones, there's some different versions. So for example, there's an early version of Last Goodbye, which is called Unforgiven. Grace is an album that I had on CD and I now have it on vinyl and I've just listened to it like thousands of times. I first found it through Jeff Buckley's cover of Hallelujah, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. His own songs are so beautiful as well. Grace, Mojo Pin. I really like Lilac Wine as well. It's so melancholy, but so beautiful with that. So when I saw that there was a Jeff Buckley release this year, I was so excited. And this pressing is beautiful. It also comes with download codes for a digital version of the album. And there's also this beautiful piece inside that just says how much Jeff Buckley loved record stores. And just like, if he was alive today, he would have been in one of the record stores for Record Store Day celebrating with us. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's just fantastic. I love Jeff Buckley's music so much. He was taken from us too soon. This is something that I would have bought even if it wasn't a Record Store Day exclusive. Like I wish that this was available just generally. Unfortunately, I think because it's pressed on black vinyl, I'm not sure whether this means that it is gonna be a truly limited edition pressing or if it might be pressed in a slightly different way later on because I just wish that everyone could have a copy of this. Like I don't want this to be limited. I want it to be spread throughout the world. But if you do manage to have a listen to Jeff Buckley, if you haven't already, highly recommended. You will fall in love. And and then you will just be sad because you'll wish that there was more music from him. So that was the first record that I got. So the second record that I got this year is from Soccer Mummy and this is her Bandcamp EP for Young Hearts which is finally being pressed onto vinyl. So this is the EP that was previously only released digitally. Soccer Mummy released her debut LP Clean last year but this is the EP that started it all. There's early versions of like 3am at a party and it's just really lovely to be able to have some of that early work on vinyl finally. This is a lovely edition as well. It's pressed on this green, I believe it's called smoke vinyl. So it's got this darker color through it, which is like in a smoke effect. This record also comes with a beautiful poster and yeah, it's just like a very special release. This is one of the things I really love about Record Store Day, that records that were previously only released digitally are finally available in a physical copy. So yeah, I'm just really pleased to have this one. The next two records that I got kind of go together because they are the two Madonna EPs. So we have True Blue and La Isla Bonita. I think they both come with like these special extended mixes and like club mixes. They are reproductions of the Japanese press so they both have these obi strips and they're just gorgeous. <laughs> I seem to be making a habit of collecting the Madonna pressings for Record Store Day. They're just always so lovely. Like these are pressed on green vinyl for La Isla Bonita and True Blue is of course on blue vinyl. But they also come with like these extra mixes, these extra versions and ah, oh, I just think they're like such lovely additions. I'm so pleased to have them and to add them to my Madonna collection. I definitely do need to make the Madonna collection video. It's on my list of video ideas and I keep meaning to make it. But now I'm thinking, yes, I've got two more. I probably should make that. I'm now thinking that I've got so many of these Record Store Day exclusives with like the extended mix and the super club mix that I probably have enough vinyl now to do like a DJ set with just Madonna based on the Record Store Day mixes. I don't know how to do that, but I feel like I should just to pay homage. So yeah, these are two beautiful pressings. I'm so pleased to have those. The next record that I got is Music of Many Colors, which is a collaboration between Fela Kuti and Roy Ayers. It's so good. I've previously gotten the Fela Kuti records from Record Store Day. I think it was in 2017 I got I Go Sharp Plenty and that was a Knitting Factory Records pressing on a 10 inch. This is a 12 inch. It is again from Knitting Factory Records and this is a recording of some of the work that Fela Kuti and Roy Ayers did together when they were touring. So I think this was after their tour in Nigeria, but basically they were combining like African and American styles, really blending them and working together. So Fela Kuti is one of the most famous Afrobeat artists. This music is like a collaboration, celebration, experimentation, and it's all about kind of bringing together the experiences of Africans and African-Americans and blending them and finding like a kind of solidarity through music, which I think is really cool and joyful and important. One thing that I love about this pressing is that it fully devotes each side of the record to a different song. If you're familiar with some of Fela Kuti's work, 
it tends to be like, you know, like 10 minutes long, 14 minutes long, and it's all one song, so it needs that space. I like that they've done that with this. My other favorite thing about this pressing is the color of the vinyl. So the album itself is called Music of Many Colors. What they've done with the vinyl is it's called Rainbow Starburst, and I had no idea what that meant. I didn't know if it was gonna be like a rainbow splatter, maybe, but no, it looks like a kind of tie-dye. I don't know if it's hand-poured or if it's meant to have like the look of being hand-poured, but it's gorgeous. Yeah, it just perfectly suits the album and it's such a lovely addition. I'm so pleased to have this. I'm not sure whether this will sell out or not because I always think of Fela Kuti as being like kind of niche, but it might have sold out. I don't know. If you do still have the opportunity to get your hands on this pressing, it's so good and I would highly recommend it. The next record that I got is from Santa Gold and it is the I Don't Want Goldfire Sessions. This was a mixtape that Santa Gold released in summer last Last year. Again, it was one of those releases that was only available digitally, but now it has been pressed on vinyl and it is the most beautiful pressing. Again, like there are so many beautiful pressings this year, I'm a bit obsessed. This pressing is like greeny, yellowy, greeny color, and then it's mixed with a black vinyl and it kind of reflects the album art itself. I love it when they do that. It's just so lovely to have the pressing and the artwork side by side looking gorgeous. If you're familiar with Santa to God's work. It's very inspired by reggae. This album is very joyful and has like such a summery vibe but at the same time as you can tell from the artwork there is also a kind of political and social awareness and that is beautifully melded into the work itself. I don't know what a mixtape counts as these days. Is a mixtape an EP? Is it an LP? Is it somewhere in between? I don't know. <laughs> it seems to be a kind of a whole genre of its own and I don't know if that's because digital music allows you to put like however long you want on an album, but this is a mixtape. There's 10 tracks, so I would kind of consider this an LP, but I know that some people might consider this an EP, and I think as a mixtape it's somewhere in between, but I really love that it's finally on vinyl. I feel like I should mention at this point like how in love I am with my Record Store Day haul this year. Previous years I was obsessed as well, but this year I just feel so obsessed with every record that I got. They're all so beautiful, they're all records that I like would buy on any day of the year, not just because it's record store day. And they're also all records that like I always wished I owned. So it's very exciting. The next record that I got is an LP called Bébé la légende. And it is like a tribute to Brigitte Bardot and features a number of different tracks from throughout her career. On side A, there are five tracks by Brigitte Bardot from throughout her career. There's also three tracks which are like tributes to her from other artists. And then on the B side, there's a number of tracks from movies that Brigitte Bardot was in. So the whole album is a tribute to her career as an artist. This year I honestly like when I was first looking at the Record Store Day list I was like you know what maybe this year there just won't be anything I like. Maybe when I go through this I won't find anything that I absolutely have to have. And then right under the B's was this. If you're new to my channel or maybe haven't seen some of my older videos, I am obsessed with Yeah Yeah music and specifically Yeah Yeah Girls. So it's French 60s pop artists like Brigitte Bardot, François Sardi, France Gaulle, and it's just a beautiful genre. There's an amazing like combination of political circumstances, social changes, and it's all feeding into this music. And it's also really fun to listen to, like it's beautiful. So being a Yeah Yeah collector, of course, I had to pick up this album. But it's not just that, it's also a beautiful pressing. Again, this is on coloured vinyl. It's on a kind of baby pink, which is marbled with a darker pink. I saw that it was going to be pressed on pink vinyl, but I didn't realise how beautifully it would be, so I'm really pleased with this album. The next couple of albums I got are both soundtracks. They're both from films that were very important to me growing up, and I just love them. <laughs> so. To see them again on the list of Record Store Day releases got me really excited. Also got me a bit worried because I knew how popular these would be, that to a lot of people these were formative films. So I was really pleased to be able to get my hands on them. So the first one is Lost in Translation, the Sofia Coppola film. I love Sofia Coppola. Again, if you've seen some of my previous videos, you know that The Virgin Suicides is one of my favorite films and Lost in Translation is also up there too. I love the way that Sofia Coppola plans her soundtracks and the way that she works them into the films, into the stories. She just does such great work with music. And she also seems to be a fan of a lot of the same kinds of music that I love, like Air and Phoenix. So again, 
both of those bands feature here as well as the Jesus and Mary chain and My Bloody Valentine. They say that the album has been pressed on violet vinyl. I'm not sure if I would call it violet, I'd probably say it like is edging more towards a magenta but you know, let's not be picky. Yeah, I love this film, I love this pressing, it's really nice to be able to build up my soundtrack collection as well because I think soundtracks are so important to films. Yeah, very pleased with that. The next record that I got is from another film and it is the Ghost World original soundtrack. Another Scarlett Johansson film, you're probably gonna think that I'm just building up my Scarlett Johansson collection now, which, you know, probably sounds like a good idea. Ghost World, again, I think it came out a while before I actually ended up seeing it because it came out in 2001 apparently, but I remember seeing that film and just feeling like so like seen. I don't know, is that a way of explaining it? I finally saw a perspective of what it is to be a young woman that felt like more realistic I suppose that was cynical and funny and also like obsessed with random stuff and I thought that that was really cool and I really loved this film. I then also went and read the graphic novel and like that's perfect. <laughs> it's such a great story, it's such a sad and beautiful and complicated story and one of the things I always loved about the film itself was its use of music and it's specifically its use of random eclectic music to reflect in its personality. So the director Terry Zwickoff actually put together a bunch of rare tracks from like 78s for this album. There's like all 20s and 30s blues and jazz, there's music from Bollywood, there's all this different music coming together in a way that feels truly representative of the film itself. And yeah again it is a beautiful pressing, we've got a section from the graphic novel inside in the gatefold and the album itself is pressed on blue vinyl. I'm really pleased to own this on vinyl and I think this might be one of those films that kind of missed out on having a soundtrack pressed on vinyl because of the time at which it came out. Okay so on to the very last record that I got. Pretty excited! So the final record that I got was actually the one from the official UK ambassadors for Record Store Day and it is The Mighty Boosh. I cannot express again how much I love this record. The Mighty Boosh again was a show that I kind of grew up watching, it was always there as like an example of how awesome comedy could be, how whimsical and eclectic and yet also cynical and weird it could be. And like a lot of British sitcoms it was one of those shows that had originally started as a radio show before it was then moved onto TV. So the entire first series also exists as a radio version as well as being later transferred to TV. This is a triple LP set and it's all pressed on coloured vinyl. One is on this kind of canary yellow, one is on white vinyl and then one is on like a bright neon green. And the entire pressing comes with this beautiful artwork by Noel Fielding. If you didn't know Noel Fielding as well as starring in Mighty Boosh did like a lot of the artwork around it and its most iconic pieces. So for example this kind of face that they have on a lot of it. And he also like designed a lot of the characters like the Hitcher. And then Julian Barrett was responsible for creating a lot the music, like the very like jazz inspired stuff that Howard Moon loves, as well as like the more shall we say whimsical raps? Slightly odd, I always love that one about being in the tundra. But yeah, so this is the entire radio show on vinyl, so even if BBC like deletes it from their archives, I have a copy. I've always kind of shied away from like the comedy records that they released for Record Store Day, so I believe they released an Alan Partridge one a few years ago, and I was so tempted because I do love Alan Partridge, but at the same time I was like, it's just a picture disc. Do you know what I mean? Like it's just a picture disc of things that I can download as a digital copy whereas this is actually feels like art like they probably went back and made this beautiful as well as just containing the comedy itself and this feels like such like a great piece in itself which I really love about it. I was so excited to get this I was kind of not sure because it was more expensive than some of the other records but at the same time it's literally an entire comedy series on vinyl, so it feels like a very cool piece to own and I'm really excited to listen to it. I do also have one of Noel Fielding's live shows on vinyl, which I love, so I knew that it would be worth it and that I would listen to it. I think that this is probably my favourite purchase from Record Store Day and that is saying a lot because I am, like I said, actually in love with my records this year. I always feel like very happy with my Record Store Day hauls, I feel like, in previous years, but this year I am full on obsessed. Um, so yeah. <laughs>
So that was everything that I got at Record Store Day this year. As you've seen, it's kind of an eclectic mix. I do feel like it pretty accurately reflects the things that I was most excited about this year. There were some records that I was so tempted by, but because I ended up getting all of my first choices, I didn't decide to get them. I did actually make a post on my blog with all the records that I was most excited about this year. So if you want to check that out and see some of the records that almost made the cut, you can go ahead and find that at katywawa.com and I'll put a link to it in the description. As I said, I think that Record Store Day is a really fun day. I think there's a lot of different ways to experience it. There's a lot of different things that you can prioritize. I just really like the adrenaline of getting up early and going to wait in the queue. And like, I find that a very fun experience. But I know that there's things that you can go to like much later in the day. You can just go in and go to some of the events that they've got going on. Like there's a ton of ways to experience Record Store Day. So I hope that no one ever feels like because they don't want the exclusive releases that they can't take part in it because there's like definitely something for everyone. As you might have noticed, this year I only actually got 12 inch records. There wasn't anything particularly planned about that. It's just that those happened to be the ones that I was most obsessed with. They were just top of my list this year. If you spot any of these records that you'd like me to review or like somehow make a video, do let me know in the comments like I'd really love to do I don't know like a film review or a TV show review with some of these that I have as well as obviously I'm definitely planning on doing my Madonna collection but yeah if you do have any thoughts on these or any videos that you would like to see coming up based on these please do let me know in the comments I hope that you had a great record store day however you chose to spend it if you've made any haul videos or blog posts about your record store day this year do let me know in the comments below I'd love to see some of those because I'm always so interested to see what other people love and like how other people's music tastes kind of collect into a haul. I just think it's such like an interesting insight. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Please do remember to subscribe if you'd like to and I will see you in my next video. Bye!